So in this video, I am going to show you what to do with a whole chicken. And I always recommend uh, if you are, if you do choose to eat meat, uh, buy when it comes to chicken, buy whole birds. It's much cheaper and it uh, reduces wastage in the production link. I also recommend, as always, with meat, uh, is to kind of change your mindset a bit to start looking at meat a bit like yeah, a bit like you look at uh, salt and pepper, uh, more of as a as a, a spice uh, seasoning rather than being the main thing. Meat for flavor, beans for bulk. And the reason for this is that, um, as we all know, um, it's, uh, it's not good to eat too much meat, uh, it's not good for our health, and it's not good for the planet. And also when you eat a lot of meat, then you end up, usually what happens is people buy cheaper meat, uh, and cheaper meat has uh, very little flavor, and um, it's uh, really not fair to the, the animals that are raised in factory farms. And it's not a good idea because of all that uh, soy and corn that we feed to factory farmed animals because that has to be grown somewhere and actually we are using currently 83% of farmland is producing only 17% um, of, of, the, of the food calories that we eat, particularly in the western world where meat consumption has been very high for many years. Um, but before I go on about that, obviously this uh, video is about um, what to do with that chicken. Um, and um, basically how to uh, get that all set up so that you can use that chicken to flavor dishes that uh, where plants are the star of the show. Uh, again, where we use beans and pulses, nuts and so on uh, for the, the protein and then the meat is there for flavor. And actually your brain, just a little bit of, of, of science behind this, your brain likes the meaty flavor. That's what triggers the dopamine in your brain. Your brain doesn't actually care what it is that fills your, your belly up. Uh, your body, however, does your cells will and your longevity and your well-being actually also uh, depends on this. Uh, so that's why it's a really good idea, again, to think of meat as being flavor and beans and pulses as being bulk. You support uh, your, your, your local butcher also because they will be able to tell you where the bird is from or where the, 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 the meat is from, where the animal is raised. If they don't, then uh, it's not a good butcher. This bird has had a, a good life, it's been treated with respect and I think it's just so important that we remember that it's, this is not a piece of meat, this is an animal and an animal is a living being and thus it should be treated with respect um, and I think it's just so important that we, that we acknowledge you know, uh, when we deal with, uh, with meat uh, that there, there was a living creature behind it. So what you, what you do after you have uh, sent the thought to it and wished it a, um, a happy rebirth. Maybe you won't go that far, maybe that's just me. Uh, but after you have sent the, the, the animal that gave his life your loving thought, what you do is you, you lift it up like that by the thigh, and then you get your knife in like this, and you break it like that, and then you cut it exactly where the joint is, okay? And then the one that's a little bit tricky is, is finding this one. So this is where you split the upper thigh, from the, the drumstick. And then you do the same on the other side here. It's always important to have sharp knives. Uh, there is a, uh, a video coming where I show you how to keep your knives uh, nice and sharp. Good cooking starts with good sharp knives. And then the same basically goes with the wing here. You lift it up and then you sort of just get in there and then you will find that joint. It takes a little bit of practice, uh, but you'll get the hang of it very soon. There we go, okay. And then I'm just gonna get the, uh, the wing tips off here again. You basically just find the, uh, the, the, the joints. We've got the carcass here, we're going to go to a slightly larger uh, knife now. And then basically you cut. So that is also just going straight into a stock. And then obviously you've got the breast meat here, which usually requires quite a bit less uh, cooking uh, to not dry out because there is no fat in it. So what I will do is I'll basically just take, I'll take the breast meat off the, uh, the breast plate here.
There we go. You know, a really nice piece of um, of chicken breast that you can use just like you would if you if you bought it. I'm gonna cut that up because then I just have these nice little portions. You know, three, four good portions of um, of chicken. I'm gonna freeze that, and then I can take it out and use it for stir fry and do different things with it. So the rest of it here, I'm going to basically just chop the carcass up just ever so slightly. Maybe we even need It isn't the prettiest thing in the world, but again, that is what it looks like. So the next step here is that I'm going to uh, season it with uh, with salt. Um <clears throat> I've done it so much now that I feel, you know, I kind of, I, I go by eye. Um, if you feel more comfortable using a scale, do that. Also you have to think about, in this case, uh, not all of it is, is meat. So you want to be a little, uh, you want to go a little bit uh, less. Uh, so that the salt penetrates all the way into the meat um, and via the osmosis process that basically helps, contrary to what a lot of people think, that helps retain moisture when you cook it so you get a much more succulent outcome. Let's say you wanted to flavor this, you could chop up a bit of rosemary and some lemon zest and then that pulls that rosemary and lemon zest into the chicken. That could be any herb you want, I'm just showing you the very basic principle and then there is endless number of variations. Okay, so now my chicken has been um, dry brining for a few hours. I didn't give it overnight, I just gave it about two hours, which is fine. So now I'm gonna show you what the next step is, which is initially we're going to just rub a bit of oil into the chicken. I'm gonna use olive oil. And then we're going to roast it at a high heat for uh, just a few minutes, maybe 10, 10 minutes, to brown it off uh, and seal in uh, the flavors. Then we're going to add liquid and then we're just going to re reduce the heat right down, put a lid on it and then we're just going to leave the chicken in there, uh, what you call uh, low and slow, uh, so that the meat retains all that beautiful moisture and the result is going to be absolutely delicious. All the seasoning has been done already, so now all I'm going to do is give it some olive oil. Just enough to uh, to coat it, you know, you don't have to go uh, crazy. Also because there is a bit of fat in the chicken as well, so all you just want to make sure that there's just enough olive oil to, to coat it. Give that a good little rub. Okay, and then just make sure to kind of spread out your, your chicken bits. Um, so there is... I mean, this one is a little bit small. Ideally, you want a little bit more space in between, but um, this is what I'm doing at the moment. And then, um, basically, you brown that off so the heat gets everywhere. 10 minutes. Then we add some liquid in the form of water. And then we reduce the heat right down. So my oven's on. I put it up to 220 degrees. I know that sounds like a lot, but again, that's just to brown off the meat. Uh, you could also do that in a pan, but then you've got extra dishes to do, which uh, is why would you want to do that when you can just do it in the oven. Um, so it's somewhere in between 200 to 230, depends a little bit on how, uh, how good your oven is really. I use um, uh, ventilation, air, and um, as soon as that's hot, I'm going to put my chicken in, give it 10 minutes. Then we're going to have a look to see how much uh, the, the level of browning you want. Obviously, the more you brown it, the more dark uh, uh, and sort of golden your, your stock is going to become. And it's not quite as brown as I like it. I think it's because my oven is, uh, is a little bit broken, um, so it's, it's not closing properly. Um, that obviously needs to be fixed. But as you can see, it has been sort of, it, 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 it's cooked on the surface, which means that it's been sealed off. So I'm, I'm going to proceed uh, with the... Um, uh, with the next step here, <clears throat> uh, which basically is just to uh, give it some 
some liquid, just like that. It doesn't have to be completely covered. In fact, it shouldn't. It's kind of like in between roasting and, and bracing is what you're doing here. And then you want to be, whoops, that was uh, very hot, obviously. You want to be able to, um, to, to cover this, uh, so if you don't have a uh, befitting lid, uh, then use tin foil. Depending on how long you've got, I mean, the lower the better actually, because it, it makes it more juicy. Uh, but if you put it in at about 140 degrees, 100 to 100, uh, 140 to 150, then you're still going to get a beautiful moist result. One and a half to, uh, to two hours. Uh, I'm going to check it maybe every, every half an hour and just baste it a little bit by pouring some of the, uh, the cooking liquid uh, over. Um, and as you can see, the, um, the meat now is uh, completely falling off the bone here. Um, and then the whole idea is that you got that juice in there um, where all the flavor has come out straight away. So this will now need to cool down a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull all the meat off the bone. Make sure that there's no bones in it. And then we're going to pour the juice over the, um, uh, the meat. And then when you use it, you both get the juices and you also get the, um, the meat. So again, it's all about extracting the maximum amount of flavor. Okay, now the chicken has cooled down. In fact, I have left it uh, overnight because I didn't have time to do it yesterday, um, which is completely fine. It uh, is not a problem. Um, and um, basically now what you want to do is you want to uh, take the meat off the bones and then you want to put the meat under the, uh, the stock, as you can see here, which is actually turned into a, um, a gel because of all that collagen uh, that's in there, um, in the cartilage and the bones. Right, so I'm gonna get one for the meat, and then I'm going to get one for discarding the bones. Now you could obviously um, continue actually cooking a, uh, a stock on, uh, on these bones. Uh, what I've shown you here is the uh, the quick and dirty method for using a whole chicken in one go. You can mix it into other dishes to give flavor. Or you can use it in a in a sandwich or um, a salad. But basically, this is like really, really the best stock cube you will have ever used in your life. Namely because you get the flavor from the bones and from uh, the meat as well. But as we say, meat for flavor, beans for filler. And so I'll definitely also show you how to use uh, this uh, chicken like this in the, to, to make beans sing if eating meat is your thing. And all this uh, chicken meat here and remember we also put that whole chicken breast uh, in the in the freezer so there's all this meat plus the meat you have in the freezer and then there's this which is uh, the, the last bits of meat and then this uh, beautiful stock which has uh, become like gel because of the the collagen good for your skin your bones basically you want to make sure that there's uh, no bones in there you have to be pretty vigilant when you go through it see there was a little bone piece um, and that's uh, where you know mindfulness training comes in handy uh, because it's all about just uh, paying attention and of course if you are serving this to to children you know you just want to make sure that the, the portion you're serving them you just go through it just again just to to double check um, but I mean it is fairly evident uh, where, where the where the bones are so I don't think this should be what's stopping you from doing this wonderful principle we just kind of like move it around a little bit because we want that collagen, the stock to, to coat all of the meat. And then I'm going to portion it out 
in little uh, portion pots and then I'm going to, uh, to freeze it and then I basically have it ready. Like I said, it's the most amazing stock cube. Fla chicken flavor uh, and then, you know, beans could be the, the, the filler. Um, say you were making a barley risotto with uh, locally grown fava beans, for instance, you know, and then you put just a little handful of this in there. For, for you know two to four people depending on how much you want to put in there and I guarantee you you will be amazed at how much flavor how much, how much depth of flavor you're gonna get from this the quality of the uh, the chicken uh, in this case from uh, diaper poultry and um, which is uh, where, where they raise animals that are treated